Now, online activity by Russian bots, trolls and automated accounts has increased by 4,000% following the Salisbury poisoning and alleged chemical attack in Syria. This is from government analysis that's identified what they call Kremlin-inspired accounts that repeatedly post messages to spread disinformation and distort the truth. Well, Theresa May has said that this disinformation campaign is not just aimed at social media and the UK. It is intended to undermine the actual institutions and processes of the rules-based system, such as the Organisation for the Prevention of Chemical Weapons. We must do all we can at every turn to challenge this. Well, for more on this, let's bring in Sky's defence correspondent, Alistair Bunkle. Um, quite alarming statistics there. Can you just unpick them for us, Alistair? Yeah, so this is research that's been done by the government um, in association with others that have looked... They've sort of done deep dives into a lot of accounts that they've uh, isolated as being possible Russian bots. Now, I think what we've got to be careful to differentiate between is those who might be determined as Russian bots, so therefore sort of acting on behalf of the Kremlin, whether they're paid or not, to push out a message um, from the Kremlin, and those who just have a sympathy with the Russia, with Russia's position on Syria or on Salisbury, for example, but are, but are tweeting in their own personal capacity. There is a big difference there. But then figures are quite extraordinary. They've looked into 45,000, uh, or they've identified 45,000 accounts. Uh, I think we've got one of them that they have um, uh, isolated for us. Part now, this is a lady girl. called Partisan Girl, which actually, uh, she is a prolific tweeter, 48... 9,000 tweets in her tweeting history. Followers. Very large follower base. Um, tweeting a lot about Syria and about Russia and, uh, and about the, the US and the UK and how they all sort of uh, overlap. Now, the argument uh, by the government is that having looked very deeply into her Twitter history, they believe that some of her tweets are nefarious, so they are not necessarily... Uh, she is not necessarily representing an individual with individual views, but her tweets are pushing out a message that it is allied to the Kremlin in a certain way. And the UK government has a whole task force just looking at people's Twitter feeds. Well, the UK has GCHQ and the NSC, uh, NS, NHSC, which um, both are very, very... Uh, uh, concentrated at the moment on Russian online activity in a number of forms. Russian disinformation campaign has really taken off over the last couple of months. It is something that Russia does very well um, in that sort of sphere of hybrid warfare. It is something that up until quite recently was centred on Eastern Europe, for example. But I think with the Salisbury poisoning, it suddenly came into the British domain and people are much more aware of it now. I mean, I certainly, over the last couple of weeks... The, the amount of uh, abuse or uh, the amount of pro-Russian messages tweeted on that, me, yeah. Yeah, tweeted to me or emailed to me has gone through the roof. And I think if you replicate that um, through the journalistic world, through the political world and through the sort of the general public world, the point is, is that it keeps pushing a message and pushing a message in different ways. But with freedom of speech, what can you do about it? Well, there's nothing you can do about it uh, on a basic level and there's nothing you should do about it on a basic level in terms of freedom of speech. It when, it's when it veers into abuse, harassment uh, or sort of foul language in a way, which it can do, and that's when it changes and when it becomes a little bit more sinister. OK, Alistair, thank you.